So let's look back at those games. Three points and three goals uh, for Liverpool against Brentford at Anfield. Two of them from Mo Salah, including this rather important one in the first half, Michael, because at this point, Brentford were a bit of a stubborn resistance. Yeah, it was 50-50 at this point, wasn't it? But it was a lovely first touch. It was a good goal, actually. That first touch with his right foot just set it perfectly. And I mentioned at half-time, this is such an easy finish for someone of Mo Salah's calibre. You know, coming in on, off the right-hand side, the goal is really open, so you can just even curl it slightly, just set it off on the post. You'll see maybe a little bit of spin there, yeah. And, uh, and Mo Salah could do that with his eyes closed. It was a great finish, um, but a pretty easy one for that man. What about this one? Well, this was... Um, we were all debating, is it offside, is it out of play? I think Mo Salah was debating it himself, hence not celebrating too, uh, too much. But again, he makes it look easy. Um, you're facing the ball, you know, you're heading it almost square on, so it's not the hardest of headers in the world. But listen, there's m many players out there that would miss that. He's, uh, he makes... A lot of finishes look very, very easy. That is his 10th Premier League goal of the season. And at the moment, just how important is Diego Jota to Liverpool? Yes, very. Um, you know, they have got a lot of injuries. This is a fantastic finish. And he's a top-class player, isn't he? And he's, you know, he's one of those players that can play in a few different positions. You can drop him into midfield. You can play him off either side or down the middle. Uh, links play well. He's brilliant in the air. And as you can see, he can fire one in from outside the box as well. Really good performance. Yeah, he scored in his last three at Anfield. And as we said before the game, that's one defeat in 48 there now in the Premier League. It's, it is one of the hardest places to go. Yeah, it's some record they've got there. It really is. Um, you can see why with a performance like today against a tough Brentford side. Um, <coughs> Salah with the goals again um, and a great performance all round. Yeah, and Brentford, as we said, had a plan. It was working, but it's a long time to try and implement it. Well, like we all said, I think going to Anfield is hard. I think you have to concentrate for more than 90 minutes. I think Liverpool created the right chances at the right time and they fell to the right people that put them in the back of the net. But I didn't see it being a 3-0 to Liverpool, but if Liverpool perform like that, especially in attack, that they will be hard to stop. Just to put that into context, that's Brentford's biggest defeat in the Premier League since October 2022. Right to Villa Park, where the home team have won 13 home league games in a row. What momentum they've got, Sean. And this was the own goal from Robinson that set them on their way. Um, I was glad to see Tillman Stein. He puts in a great ball with his left foot, causes a lot of problems in those area, and it comes off of Robinson for an own goal. John McGinn um, amongst the goals again? Yeah, left forward. The, the header from Robinson was just down into a dangerous place. McGinn takes his touch and, uh, and whacks it into the corner. He's had a really good season so far. Emery's almost got, you know, well, including this guy, Ollie Watkins, he's uh, really getting the best out of him. Yeah, um, like Michael said, John McGinn right on form and Watkins as well. Um, they're punishing teams, a bit of a consolation goal here for Fulham, but an another great performance from Villa at home and another win. Yeah, first in 34 Premier League games for Raul Jimenez. Uh, West Ham back to winning ways themselves. This was the early gift, if you like, they got, Sean. Um, yeah, and I think Pakatar does well. He uses the defender there to, um, to block out the goalkeeper and whips it back across the um, defender so the keeper can't see it. So, fantastic finish there. There'll be some frustration here, Michael, the way Forrest got back into it. Um, you cleared that up at half-time. You didn't think that was a foul. These two goals... Yeah, no, absolutely. It, I mean, it could have been a foul, sir. I just didn't think it was enough to, to, to stop the game and bring it back. Um, so, I thought the referee and VAR did well there. This is a Langer with a lovely finish. A lot of the time you see those going, uh, going high. No wonder he's taking a shirt off with abs like that, but he'll get a yellow <laughs> card for it, strangely. But this frustrating was only two minutes later con to concede from the set play. Yeah, very frustrating. Um, but Bowen once again for West Ham, right in the goals, and then another set piece after that. Suchek is a massive danger in the box and gets on the end of it, and three points to West Ham. Um, but at one point, looking like they were going to struggle to get the win. So Brighton, a Sean Wright Phillips run to create the first goal. I thought mine would be a little bit better than that, to be honest, but, <laughs> but I think Adingra does well here. I think he puts the defenders in the positions where it's on his terms and he just keeps driving it. One, two for me was perfect, but how calm and collective he takes that is beautiful. Now you get some red cards that are debatable. You don't think this one is oh, at all? Oh, this is awful, really bad. I mean, sometimes you see someone going over the ball, but you think, oh, are they going for the ball? That's just like totally mm. away from the ball. It's. It's a real bad one. I don't think there's any debate that that's a red. And Sheffield United, two minutes later, got the equaliser. Yep, taking advantage of the ten men and, and, and getting a much-needed goal for them. 
Um, and then they'll be hoping that can push them on now this season and put a few more points on the board. OK, so that has rounded up our earlier games. One more big one to go. Reminder of the team news ahead of Chelsea against Manchester City. Maurizio Pochettino with just the one change. Uh, no Levi Colwell, who had been an ever-present in the Premier League uh, this season. So Mark Kukurea is in at left-back for Chelsea. They do have Amanda Breuer back on the bench. Three changes uh, for Manchester City. Diaz and Guardiola are back into the back line. Phil Foden returns as well. John Stones, of course, is injured. Ake's out as well. Kovacic is a substitute. So too is Jack Grealish. That's because of Doku's form. He starts again. Right, let's get the two manager views ahead of this enormous clash in West London, beginning with Maurizio Pochettino. Cole Palmer plays against his former side. He's made a really good start to life at Chelsea. Just tell us a bit more about him as a player. What are his outstanding qualities and why has he started so well? well I think it's, it's so soon to talk too much. I think we need to be calm. He's a very talented player. He's still young, need to, uh, to be more mature, more experienced. But the profile is very good. I think the, the capacity, you know, to link, uh, um, to be a this playmaker that can link uh, the team, the teammate, I think is uh, make a very important player for us in the way that we want to play. But uh, still, we cannot talk too much. Uh, we need to give uh, the time to, to to learn and to improve. And then we'll see in a few years, is is going to be the, the big player that we, we saw. And I want to pick out one other individual, if I can, Nicholas Jackson, hat-trick on Monday night. What will that do for him in terms of confidence and well, belief? Yes, I need to provide him the belief and the, the capacity to be more calm in front of the goal. I think, yes, hope to tonight or this afternoon can play and to, you know, to approach the games in different way. I think, yes, uh, it's about to learn about the experience and I think uh, the three goals can provide him the, the, the better tools and, of course, to be more calm in front of the goal. Uh, Jeremy Doku starts. The last couple of big away games, Arsenal, Manchester United, he's come off the bench. Is this like, the next big step for him, trying to dominate an away game like this and a, a top opponent like Rhys James? No. <laughs> He who had played uh, the previous game in Arsenal or United or whatever, I decided to, for him, for for his, you know, is in, in a good a good moment. And but Jack was in a good moment too. The last two three games he played played really really well. It was not easy, I doubt, but at the end, you know, I decided for that. So why Doku over Grealish? What what's no. what have you weighed up as a manager? I wake up today and I said for Chile. <laughs> you didn't. No, yeah, of course. No, no, it's true. Really? It's true. Yeah, it's true. So there are sometimes just a bit of instinct. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. So I rely a lot on Jack with uh, Phil, with uh, Jeremy, with uh, with Bernardo one play outside. So uh, honestly, I, I don't have any doubts about uh, what they offer me, or offer us to the team for many, many years. So Jeremy is special in the final third, and and of course the young player, and of course you have to see how how behave. You know, in these stages, but they have done it and against West Ham away in other games. He play he play all the time really good. Yeah. Well, Pep Guardiola there uh, talking about uh, that competition. Uh, six wins in the last six meetings, as you can see. Um, Jeremy Doku starts then. Jack Grealish on the bench. James, I guess that's just a sign of the City competition. But from what you've seen of this fella, he's hit, really hit the ground running. Yeah, he has, especially last week. Um, I, I saw the highlights of that and he was involved in pretty much every goal that, that we scored. Um, he's electric, he's quick, um, and I'm sure the Chelsea defence will be in for a tough day. Good news is for you, you're up against him in five weeks at Goodison Park, Can't so wait. you can watch him a bit closer uh, today. It's incredible competition. I mean, you've got a feel for Jack Grealish in a way, haven't you? Um, yes and no. I think it's those sort of competitions that put City and the players they have playing at that elite level all the time because they, they want to play as well, so they know when they do to get their chance, they have to take it or put on a performance that makes it hard for him to leave you out. And I think that's what Doku's come. I think Jack had a slight injury before. And he's just got better and better within the game. I was looking at those stats then. I looked at them from bottom to top, and I thought that, that that's as good as some players in the Premier League have all season. If I did, if it didn't say ninety minutes against Bournemouth last time, I would have thought four assists in the season so far. Yeah. That's good. One goal, wide player, not bad. Yeah. You know, and then I saw at the top that's just in his ninety minutes last game. <laughs> Incredible last game, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, who would come through Manchester City's system and then leave the club to go to Chelsea? I mean. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know don't, who would do that, Sean. Sure. But, um, <laughs> but Cole Palmer has. He's followed your your lead. 
Um, he's been at City from the age of six. It was really interesting to hear Pep Guardiola in the build-up to this game saying, I wanted him to stay, I said you'll play minutes, and he said, no, I want to go and be a permanent player at another club. I mean, do you admire that mentality, first of all? Um, yeah, I think you've got to, because he could have just stayed at City, been comfortable in many respects, and just picked up trophies. But he With clearly, Mahrez going as well. He clearly wants to be more than a bit part player, and in that respect, he, he wants to help the team with playing more games to win silverware rather than do it from the bit part side. But I think Chelsea suits him better in respects of the way he plays because City's, City's quite slow, progressive when they play football. They're very patient. Whereas I think Chelsea's more hustle and bustle with it. They're more aggressive with it. And I think it's kind of kicked Cole Palmer into gear where he's joining in with that as well. And it's, it's look, looking well for him. Sean, why on earth would Pat Guardiola... If he thought he was that good, why would he sell him to a uh, you know a potential? Because he right, because so the player said he wanted I know, to go. But you, yeah, but it's that's all right. That... Yes, you can go. Well, go then. Go to like do what Harry Kane did. Well, you're not going to a, a rival. But Pep's proved this with Jesus and Chenko. He he. he, he yeah, does that, yeah, exactly. But was Jesus and Zinchenko playing every week? I mean, if he thought he was that good, surely he wouldn't sell him to Chelsea. Maybe that, we never know. Maybe that was the only option on the table. I know as much as this is that if somebody wants to leave, he doesn't shut the door on that. He lets the player go and fulfil their dreams. Well, he started three Premier League games for City. He's already started twice as many as that for City. For well, Chelsea. no, yeah, from his point of view, I totally yeah. get it. Totally get it. And, and sure, but will I it feel a bit strange Manchester. for him today? Will he have a, an extra point to prove, do you think, as a Manchester boy, a City boy from the age of six? I think any player would. I think, especially at that young, I think in respects of you wanted to play more for, say, City, that team, and they don't let you play that much, and then you go on, you want to show them, this is the reason why I wanted to play more games, because this is my capability, this is what I can do on a regular play basis if I was playing more and more games. But it's, it's for a hard challenge. <laughs> he, he had it, in a way, it quite easy at City, reflects to keeping the ball. Big day for Cole Palmer and Chelsea's challenge is there for all to see. The last goal they scored against Manchester City was the Champions League final of 2021 with Kai Havertz winner. Can they get close to the champions today? We're approaching kickoff next. 